نحمد و نسلم و نسلم على رسول الكریم اما بعد The very verse of Quran which says Read in the name of your Lord How did the revelation come? Was there a book that Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told to read from on his own? Rather he had a teacher in the form of Angel Jibreel So he came and he is the one teaching Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that is, that is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finally realized that every time he squeezed me and leave me he is trying to hint to the fact that follow me as I say just copy it because every time when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by Jibreel to say Iqra he would say Ma ana biqari I am not someone who could read I have not learned to read then he would squeeze tight and would release him and ask the same question and he would say Ba ana biqari and the third time when he realized, he said, you know what, he's going to squeeze me again. Then for that reason, he just followed. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. He said the same. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. So the verse that you are suggesting as the first revelation, which we all know, alhamdulillah, was the first revelation. The incident there clarifies the point that you are raising. So are we not supposed to read? Yes, we are supposed to read. We read with qualified people, teachers. And that is why you would find the books are revealed in the language of the people. And Allah mentioned that in Quran, then we have sent prophets in the people from themselves, from within them, in their language. Bilisanihi, in the language that they, they speak. So why there is then the need of a prophet to explain the Quran or the books revealed to their prophets at their time. Why is the need for the so many prophets bringing about the same message over and over again, even in the people who know the language with depth? So you look at the number of revelation, number of texts sent down by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for major collection. And then if you count all the suhuf, all the scrolls, it would come to 315 according to a slightly weak narration that there are about 315 different suhuf revealed to different prophets. And how many prophets were sent down? And many a time, few at the same time. Few prophets at the same time talking about the same book. They're teaching the same book. What then is the need for more people or even one to teach the language if people could understand on their own so we need teacher for that so the final point is if the translation has been done by a qualified person then that should suffice well you do not know who the person is who translated it gone are the days when the scholarship was certified authenticated and there were certain testimonies done to verify it nowadays anyone can claim scholarship to anything and that is why the chain is extremely important so someone who's translated it unfortunately common men cannot figure out whether the translation is good or web or bad due to our lack of understanding of the language the depth is not there there was once a man reading Quranic ayah and he was saying وَالسَّارِقُ وَالسَّارِقَةُ فَاقْطَعُوا أَيْدِيَهُمَا جَزَاءً بِمَا كَسَبَانَ كَالَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Accidentally he said after that Although in Quran it says وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ And there was a young girl walking past She heard it He said that's right uh, That's wrong It can't be right What you recited cannot be right It cannot end with Wallahu Ghafoorur Rahim. And the man was like, oh, he just, you know, got, you know, a bit, bit more alerted and he started looking at that and he realized, he actually, Wallahu was in hunger. But he said, how do you know? Have you ever studied the Quran? And she said, no. She perhaps was even a, not, not a Muslim. But she knew Arabic grammar very well. She said, or the language, she said, it is, it doesn't befit 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the punishment and a severe punishment for those who commit theft by chopping their hands off and yet Allah is saying that Allah is merciful although Allah is merciful but the context suggests that there has to be some stern warning type attribute the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the attributes which would have some meaning that would dictate that Allah or, or would imply that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe in punishment rather than Allah is merciful because the context doesn't go with it so a young girl would know it nowadays even the scholars of a basic level the student of knowledge who are studying deen even they will find it difficult to connect these dots find those detailed and nuanced stuff from the book so since we lost all that we have to be a bit more careful where we get the translation from many a time the very qualified people do uh, as well uh, unfortunately the concept of presenting your work to even senior people for certification before you publish it is gone people just write and they publish they discuss they say whatever and whatever they feel comfortable with according to their understanding they just publish it and that is a big problem so you do not trust everyone and anyone you do not mistrust but you be safe and cautious don't question but always find out the right stuff from right people especially in the modern time may Allah give us tawfiq to understand and keep ourselves safe it is the same with whatever you do in the worldly way and i'm very surprised that when people ask similar questions that when it comes to the matter of worldly affairs we make completely right choice and right judgment no one questions why when someone comes to your door or someone send you a an advert to your email or your whatsapp or your phone or your text message or through the you know uh, letter box you take it and you do not just run after that you verify it's a very nice plumber in the area would you like to have some work done you say oh let me get something you don't you just say let me check yes he said that is good but let me find out who the person is anyone comes knock at your door say that I can do this you say okay let's come and teach my student because you're very good looking at the papers look like you're university student and you're teaching part-time as a tuition let me get you as a tutor for my children no you just go and verify it you ask other people are oh, you a very good car mechanic come and sort my car you don't you how can we make very correct choice and right choice when it comes to worldly matters because we are wise there we know we try to check things when it comes to deen whatever appeals to me we run like a stuff for the small child who wouldn't even know the, the the consequences it shouldn't be like that so we need to grow up and start thinking and rather than being very naive oh you know we should have good opinion don't feel bad yes people may be saying whatever but i should not judge people and their intention let it be so why don't you do that for dunya we think material thing if you were to find out about someone who is a very good tutor and yet you know that some people suggested out of 100 everyone say he's good only one person said oh he, he has got pedophile tendencies what would you do would you take that person to teach your kids obviously not how come you're very cautious and careful when it comes to dunya and the same person comes completely as if they've got no sense and they behave completely out of kilter and you feel like subhanallah how could this man make such a mistake and it is quite common especially among educated people you know what? we don't judge people's intention and in the name of that nicety and with that they actually feel that they're doing a good job rather than the scholars or the students of knowledge telling them to be careful they feel like you know what no they are very suspicious of people this is against islam this is against humanity we shouldn't be suspecting it's not being suspicious it's being sensible be careful it has to we have to be very careful when it comes to the matter of deen 
because it is of utmost importance in our life.